Well, we talked about it coming into this series that the Blue Jays needed to find a way to win the series. At the very least, win two or three against the Rockies. They lost game one, and we're all starting to crap ourselves. But they went out there in game two and game three and got the job done, winning 5 nothing today on the back of Jose Barrios' masterclass and Justin Turner doing what he does best. I saw a lot of comments in my Justin Turner signing video where I'm breaking down all these numbers about how great he's been in his career. And like nobody was hearing it because they see 39 years old and that's what they think of. But boy, oh boy, he had three hits today. Every single one of them had an RBI, had an RBI attached to them. As the Jays win it, like I said, 5 nothing over the Rockies. They've won two in a row now. And they're back to 500 at 8-8. Eight and eight. So kind of hit back to the even now, back to the drawing board. And you, you won the series. You won back-to-back -back series. You won both series at home against the Mariners and now the Rockies. You're in decent shape now. You have the Yankees coming up, and that's going to be tricky regardless. But one step at a time, let's break this game down, all right? Scoring started early. And guess who? Justin Turner. Did get a little bit of luck on this play, though, with George Springer in scoring position. Kind of a blooper that found a way to drop into right field for a base hit. Springer coming around to score, and the Jays in the first inning have the lead 1-0. Then, bottom of the third inning, off of Kyle Fre Freeland. Yeah, he ain't great. In the area of 16 going into play today, he allowed four runs over five innings in work, and I believe the ERA dropped. Let me let me, let me see that. Uh, it dropped three full points. It tells you how awful his start to the season has been. But then, bottom of the third inning, with Kevin Kiermeyer at third base, Vladimir Guerrero Jr., boy, oh boy, hit an absolute missile to center field for an RBI single, scoring. Kevin Kiermaier making a 2-0 Blue Jays lead. And shocker! Justin Turner coming up with a guy in scoring position. And he drills an RBI double scoring Vladdy. And the Blue Jays now lead at 3-0. Bottom of the fifth. Again, shocker! Justin Turner rips a single in the center field. Springer comes in to score in the bottom of the fifth to make it 4-0 Blue Jays. And then Isaiah Kiner-Falefa hit two, twice. Hit the ball really hard today. One actually counted as he's an RBI single scoring... Ernie Clement in the bottom of the eighth inning to put the Jays up 5 0 and it's curtains. It was never in question. The pitching staff was awesome. You got timely hits from Justin Turner and even Vlad, he got one. And IKF had an RBI single. It was good vibes all around at Rogers Center this afternoon as the Jays out hit the Rockies 12 2. How the hell did you allow 12 runs in game one? It is baffling how that happened. But it's baseball. You never know what you're going to get on any given afternoon, night, whatever. But let's get to these players now because they're, boy, oh boy, there's a couple guys I want to talk about. And we're going to start with the main man himself. The guy who was, I mean, look, you want, you scored five runs, you were fine. You had 12 hits on, five runs and 12 hits. Not bad. But Jose Barrios. If you've watched my videos two years ago in Jose Barrios' awful season, you will know in those videos, I always said, I want to trust this guy. He's done it so long, so much in his career. There's no way he's fallen off a cliff this bad. You just don't do that. And what has he done since then? Put up a career season last season. Now, I understand. It's only, what, four starts into the year? Uh, yeah, four starts into the season. But holy crap, this is the best I've ever seen Jose Barrios pitch. Seven innings today. And honestly, if you watch the game from start to finish, he didn't have his great stuff. His slurve wasn't really biting all that much, but he had everything else going. That sinker was off the charts. He looked great. He was battling. He, he realized early on he didn't have the pitch, but he still had to sprinkle it in. And then he got, uh, was it Tovar? Ezekiel Tovar? To strike out on three straight curveballs or three shell slurves, whatever the hell you want to call it. When it's not working, and then he dices you like that, it's ugly. Seven innings pitch for Jose. Two hits allowed. Walked two. Did hit a guy as well. So th those were really the only situations where things got hairy. Right? Whether it was a walk or a hit by pitch. Other than that, there were never any damage. He was never in any damage all night long, afternoon long. Seven innings, two hits, seven Ks. Walked two and nothing more. An ERA of just a shade over one to start the season for Jose. Now, it's going to come back down to earth at some point. But what a start he is putting together. Offensively, as we mentioned, the Jays had 12 hits today. George Springer, 2 for 4 with a run scored for him. Numbers are starting to creep up for Georgie. A 222 average, 319 OBP. And, and he has stolen base today as well. So good on Georgie. Vladi, 1 for 4. But you know what? I'm okay if you're going to go 1 for 4 and get a clutch knock. 
That's fine by me. One for four, the run scored in an RBI for Vladdy. And Bo Bichette's approach is, yeah. He, he seems to be fighting it a little bit for me. 0 for 4 today. Didn't really have anything going. Justin Turner, 3 for 4, 3 RBIs. Like I said earlier, every single hit he had drove in a run today. 3 for 4, 3 ribs in the game. And he is hitting. Listen to this. Again, it's early. He's 39. It will come back down to earth. 386 with a league high, right? I know it's a team high. Maybe a league... Hold on. Let me see if I can find that real quick. Um... RBIs, stolen bases, earn run average, they don't have it. They, unfortunately, they don't have uh, on-base percentage. But he's got a 481 OBP. 481! He has been ridiculous. Also, shout out to the David Schneider crew. I look, I love him as well, and I think he should be in the lineup every day, for sure. And especially against the lefty today. 0 for 4 with a couple strikeouts. You can never predict baseball. All right? Ernie Clement, 2 for 4, the run scored. Kirky, you know, I have a day. Honestly. All the talk I had about yesterday about, or was it the day before? One, one of the two. About his numbers, you know, since 2022 All-Star Game. They're very similar to IKF. It's bad. But two for two with a couple singles and walked twice. He didn't get out today. Did Alejandro Cork. So a good day for him. IKF and Kevin Kiermaier, excuse me, both had hits in the game. But the one gripe that I have, and this is where I get pissed off. I understand you won 5 nothing. And look, it's all great vibes. Except for one thing. How many times are we going to see players start to get hot and then their ass gets put on the bench? Like, I love Kevin Kiermaier. I love the vibes. Very pretty fella. You know, all that stuff. But what did Dalton Varsho do to not play today? He hit home runs in back-to-back days. In fact, had basically the entire offense yesterday. And he sits on the bench today. I was like, well, a day off for lefty on the, on the mound. Yeah, Kevin Kiermaier's lefty as well. And he's done nothing to prove to you that he should be in the lineup. Kevin Kiermaier should. First one, hit two home runs in two days. And he's on the bench today against the lefty. I, I'd like to see you get, kind of ride the hot hand a little bit. Because this guy's, the, look. We all heard the stuff in the offseason and during spring training about Varsho's confidence, right? It, it was it was lacking last season because he felt like he had to live up to the trade, blah, blah, blah. Came into this year, you know, much better guy. He had a great spring, rough start to the season. You know, kind of think, boy, he's kind of unplayable right now. And then he has two games where he goes home run, grand slam, and then he goes to the bench. Like, I'm sorry. Play your best players. It's getting, it's just annoying. It's just annoying at this point. 12 hits total for the Blue Jays today. Only struck out four times, walked twice. Both times were Alejandro Kirk. And that's that. I, I needed to say that thing a little bit about Varsho because he was vibing last night. Didn't he get the dump on him? Like, didn't he get dumped with Gatorade yesterday? And he's not playing the next day. We saw that with David Schneider earlier this year. What are we doing? Anyways, I'm done. I'm done with that. Anyways. Bullpen-wise, you only got two innings from dudes. However, Hennessy Cabrera has needed to get right a little bit. Now, I think he came out in the last outing. I think it was in that blowout. He got a couple guys out, so a little bit of a positive sign. And then we obviously saw the great sign from Tim Meza yesterday. And today, Hennessy Cabrera was much, much better. Clean inning of work. No base runners. Clean. How many, how many pitches? It was very few. I don't think he... Th- yeah, hold on a minute. Batter's face. 13 pitches for Cabrera. He was great. And Nate Pearson, boy, was he buzzing today. Going out there in the ninth inning. Went an inning. Nobody put a ball in play. Three strikeouts for Nate Pearson. At one point touched 102. I'll be the ball was in the dirt and way wide. But holy crap. That's the type of stuff that he has. Now, I don't want to get too excited about Pearson. But he has gone six and a third this season. Nine strikeouts. No runs allowed. It's been a lot better. Oh boy. No, I didn't mean to drop the phone. Anyways... And that begs to that brings up the question: When Romano and Swanson come back, we know Jansen's going to come back, and yeah, Brian Servan, see you, bud. And then that's that. And sure, people are going to say, "Well, we may Mitch White." Okay, that's great. That's one of them. But who else goes? You're not going to DFA Trevor Richards. You're not going to because you're not going to do that. You know, and you look at the rest of the roster and it's something like, okay, well, you want to keep your two lefties in, in Meza and Hennessy Cabrera. And I'm just looking through the roster here. You're not going to put Bowden Francis down because you need to have some length in your bullpen. 
Uh, Jimmy Garcia, obviously not. Chad Green, obviously, obviously not. Mesa, nope. Rich, uh, Richards, nope. And there's that. So what are they going to do? It's a really interesting spot the Blue Jays have right now with Eric Swanson and Jordan Romano. Basically, they were they were in they're at Rogers Center today, so they're basically back with the team. Um, I'm very intrigued to see what roster moves get made and what ends up happening here because Nate Pearson was electric today, and let's be honest, he didn't have a great spring. So the only the real reason why he was on this team to start the year was those two guys going down. But since they've been down, and again, he's not going out there in the highest of leverage situations. But he hasn't let a run in six and a third. Nine strikeouts. Hitting a hundred. It's, it's something to have. But now you gotta, you gotta get rid of somebody else. Like, it's really interesting. I can't, I, I'm very excited, but nervous to see what happens with the roster moves. All right? So you know what, guys? The next step for the Toronto Blue Jays, I was about to end off the video, but I forgot. Yankees is the next series for the Toronto Blue Jays starting tomorrow night. At, at Rogers Center. Uh, Carlos Rodon. We did, we missed him in the first go-around at Yankee Stadium. Chris Baskin's ball for the Blue Jays tomorrow night at 7.07. Game 2. Marcus Stroman versus Yusei Kikuchi. Isn't that the same matchup that we saw in the Bronx? I think it is. And then the finale is Kevin Gosman and Clark Schmidt. I think that's the same matchup we saw at Yankee Stadium. We all know how that went for Kevin Gosman. So he needs the bounce back outing big time in that finale of that series in the Bronx against the Yankees. Before, I believe, believe the Blue Jays head out west, right? Yeah, in San Diego against the Padres on the Friday night. So you got a couple tough series coming up here, starting tomorrow night, Rodon Bassett. Bassett's been great at home throughout his Jays tenure. 707 first pitch there, all right? So you know what, guys? That's going to do it for this one. If you enjoyed the video and the win today, hit that like button. I do appreciate that. Hit the subscribe button. You guys not thought, have you not done so already? Uh, comment down below your thoughts on the video, thoughts on the game, thoughts on the whole Varsho stuff. I don't know if I'm blown out of proportion, but I just want to hear your thoughts down below. All right. Um, and I will talk to you guys Leafs edition Tuesday, right? Tuesday night as the Toronto Leafs are in Florida, taking on the Panthers at 730. And as for the Toronto Blue Jays, they're in action tomorrow for game one of the three games set against the Yankees at Rogers Center tomorrow night. 707 first pitch there. Chris Bassett, Carlos Rodon is the matchup. Thank you so much for listening and watching. I hope you enjoyed the video and the win this afternoon. We'll talk to you guys then.